evening and welcome to Tinkering with Edkelar. Over the last few months, I have gradually built up a small but useful set of machine tools and accessories to make some replacement parts for my restoration things. One of my get soon items was a rotary table or a dividing head for the mill. As you can see here, I got myself a rotary table for now, as I can't find a dividing head that would fit into my tiny benchtop mill. These all start in the XXL department apparently. Now I hardly ever get something without an immediate use case in a project. In this case, a friend from Germany, the same one that sent over the large format lens, asked if I could make him a replacement thumb screw for a retro night vision monocular. How does this thing tie in with a thumb screw? Let's find out! The rotary table arrived in the usual cheap mail order condition. Lots of oil on one side and a bit of rust on the other. If anybody ever received a piece that was completely oiled, let us know in the comments! And since the quality seems to be a bit on the meh side, I take the thing apart for some cleaning and re-greasing. There's a casting error in there that seems to rub against the warm gear. That might explain the uneven movements. After putting it together again, with some grease on the gears and some oil on the other parts, it should be quite useful. For the screw, aluminium seems to be a good choice for material. I got a 20mm piece of stock, which just so fits through the spindle of my lathe. The basic shape of the screw is simple. A bit of M6 thread with a 20mm diameter head and some knurling. As you might notice, I also upgraded the quick change tool post from the cheap thing that came with the lathe and would go out of its way whenever the tool made contact with anything metal. Literally. It might have worked with mercury, but only maybe. This one is a nice system that tightens up the lathe considerably. Facing off the part for the initial surface. And already the cut quality between the old tool post 
and the new one is night and day. Making the 6mm step for the thread next, poking a bit into the corner for a relief cut and a quick chamfer on the end. Thread cutting is done with a die against the tailstock. This keeps the die perpendicular and the threads nicely in line. The outer diameter is already nominal, so only a bit of surface dressing is needed. And parting of the screw. Before going all through, I chamfer the head slightly too, just so it has a nice feel to the touch. Turn it around and face off the far side. A bit of scotch bright for the surface dressing and done. The overall shape is ready. I can hear some of you screaming already, but what about the knurling? And you'd be right. If I intended to do it the usual way, knurling should have been done when there was enough meat on the piece to take the forces involved. But whenever you look at the thumb screws of optics, like cameras, tripod mounts or similar things, the knurling is very coarse. And here's where the rotary table comes in. I made a quick fixture for locking the screw in place in the center of the table. Centering the screw on the plate is done with a feeler gauge and a bit of turn-tap-turn -turn action. Remember, this is a thumb screw. No measurement is really critical. So long as the concentricity is good enough for the naked eye, it is fine.
Since I don't trust the thread to hold perfectly still against the forces of the cutter, I also clamp down on top of it. Now comes the repetitive part. Nibble away with a 3mm end mill, turn the table by 18 degrees and repeat. Don't forget to flip over the hold down at the halfway point. And after 20 steps, we have a nice looking knurling. But this is a night vision device. Classically, all black. Hmm. What better chance to try out something else? Anodizing. following the how-to guide of the starter kit step by step here. This is entirely new. I have done electroplating before and the hook up electricity to a submerged part aspect is the same, but here there is a prep bath involved that chemically cleans the surface. Next you have to keep an eye on the current to achieve an even and proper coat of aluminium oxide. And to add the color, it is almost like coloring easter eggs. Heat up the dye in water, dip the part into it and rinse. The only difference to the eggs is that the part has to cook after the coloring to seal in the color. Well, not bad for a first try. The bag clearly said black on it, but there is a very distinct purple hue to the part. Not sure if I made a mistake or if that color just is like that. Last step, sending it off to Germany. And this concludes this rather mixed episode. Normally I like to keep them to one specific topic, but none of these parts would have been worth an entire video on their own. I hope you enjoyed this little tiny side project. See you next time! Now I hardly ever get something without an immediate use case for a project.